Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1975 Citroen DS23 now it's a 668 horsepower, 682 pounds-feet of torque from its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine the car itself now weighs 2,436 pounds has off-road tyres, all-wheel drive and off-road suspension and it can earn a 0 to 63.041 seconds 0 to 105.788 seconds and going to a top speed of 209 miles an hour so uh, yeah this was a uh, you know a successful rally car back in its day uh, but we now have way more power from a uh, slightly smaller engine so uh, yeah it's going to be interesting to see what this car can do because uh, yeah we're dealing around s nearly s five times the power or thereabouts so uh, yeah asking a lot from this car but obviously we have given it the usual upgrades so it's not dealing with its original tyres or its original suspension even though its original suspension was highly sophisticated I still doubt it wouldn't have been able to have deal with uh, the amount of power we have now given it uh, at the end of the day we're dealing with the rough stuff as well so uh, slightly higher suspension is of benefit but even though so at the end of the day if you if we were able to use this car's suspension in its original form we would have been able to uh, raise that ride height in any anyway, anyway so uh, yeah it's not exactly out of the realm of possibility to have this car on high suspension but yeah still it's quite a lightweight car even though it's not the most powerful vehicle that we've had on this series and maybe just maybe it's racing pedigree or it's rally pedig pedigree will uh, show through obviously we're uh, you know far from the uh, stock car in terms of power and uh, torque and I doubt the rally version had much more power and torque than the standard version so uh, yeah, still asking like a lot from this either way. It's getting to a decent rate of speed there. Certainly far faster than it could ever manage originally. A little bit oversteery there. Just about being that checkpoint. understeer there, even though this car was obviously originally front wheel drive, we're only dealing around 130 horsepower or so originally, so it's definitely a lot more than that going through those front wheels now. So understeer is bound to be a, an issue at some point. From 156 across the finish line, and a time of... 2 minutes 8 seconds point seven two two makes this one of the uh, slower cars that we've had recently on this series but given the general lack of power in comparison to other vehicles the fact that this car was never meant for this kind of power originally nor the kind of speeds that we've been getting up to I guess it's no real surprise that it's way down the leaderboard yeah it's not even in the top 150 it's right down in 158th place but it does at least manage to beat a Volkswagen Desert Dingo Racing Stop Bug, which again is another rally car from around the same period as this. Also beats an MG MGA Twin Cam, Renault Megane RS, Nissan Pulsar GTIR, which is again a rally car but a far more modern one, a AMC Gremlin X, a Volkswagen Baja Bug, a Bentley Turbo R, Funko Motorsports F9, Morris Minor Series 2 Traveller, Jaguar Mark. 3.8, Mercedes Benz G63 AMG 6x6, as well as other off road cars like the Land Rover Series 3, Can Am Maverick, Aerial Nomad, a da -da -da -da. Uh, oh, Hummer H1 Alpha Open Top, and a Mini X Ray John Cooper Works Buggy. So, uh, yeah, it's faster than some off road vehicles, but it's also slightly behind a Ram Rebel TRX concept, Renault Megane R26R, Ford Anglia 105E, ExoMotive ExoSet Offroad, a, a Bar Fiat 131, a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Debated Design and a uh, Ford Racing Puma. So uh, yeah, it is still at the end of the day way down on the leaderboard. Still not the worst car that we've had, it was at least mostly controllable and uh, yeah, got up some, to some decent rate of speeds. but. Yeah, just was not powerful or quick enough on the whole to uh, really uh, make an impact on this series, which is a bit of a shame because I absolutely adore this car. I think it's one of the best cars that we've ever had added to a Forza game, but 
when it comes to this series just doesn't quite cut it unfortunately. Nonetheless, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.